In exponential functions, it's all about solving for x. And in our case, exponential functions, the x is what we're worried about. So um, let, we want to make sure you know some rules about how exponents work and how what they mean. So 2 to the third power, or 2 cubed, means 2 times 2 times 2. When we evaluate that, we get 8. 2 squared, or cube, uh, sorry, 2 to the second power means 2 times 2. It evaluates to 4. 2 to the first power means I have a 2 once. It simplifies to 2. 2 to the zero power means 2 divided by 2. Any number divided by itself simplifies to 1. So it doesn't matter what your base is, if there is a zero exponent on it, it simplifies to 1. Now we have negative exponents, which might fry your brain just a little bit, but it's okay. Math does not like negative exponents in the answers. So what we have to do is we have to flip our base, create a reciprocal, and that lets us take the negative off the exponent. So instead of having 2 to the negative 1, I flip my base to make it 1 over 2. Now that I have basically a 1 there, it's positive. When it gets flipped, I don't need it anymore. 2 to the negative 2, in order to get the negative off the exponent, I have to flip the number so it becomes 1 over 2 squared. And then I can simplify that to 1 fourth. Same here, 2 to the negative 3. I flip it and evaluate it. So whenever you need to flip a number, so maybe you have a fraction that you need flipped to turn into a whole number, you throw a negative onto the exponent. If you have a negative on the whole number, then that means you have to flip it to get rid of the negative. So let's start looking at solving for some unknowns. If I have 3n equaling 27, I need to find out what n needs to be in order to make these two sides equivalent. Well, 3 is not a 27, but 27 can be simplified or broken down in a way that it has then the same base as what's on the left. So I need like bases, and this is what we're doing, property of like bases. If I have a to the m equaling a to the n, the rule is when my bases are equal, when a equals a, then my exponents are equal. So I need to turn 27 into a base of 3. When I divide 3 out, I get 9. When I divide 3 out of 9, I'm left with 2, 3. So 27 is 3 cubed. And now I have 3 on the left, 3 on the right. Because my bases are equal, it means my exponents are equal. n equals 3. Now if I have 100,000 x being equivalent to 10,000, there is not some number that I can put over here. I can't raise 10,000 to any whole exponent and make these two sides equivalent. Or I don't know if, if I had one, 100,000 to the first power is 100,000. 100,000 to the second power means I need to add a whole set of five more zeros on that. There's no way that can be equivalent to a smaller number. So that gives me a hint that my exponent has to be less than 1 in order for this to shrink to get down to here. I need to break these down both into like bases, a smaller number that they have in common. And I notice there's a bunch of zeros and a 1, so that gives me a hint that, guess what, 10 is probably going to be that number. So if I divide 10 out, Over and over, I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tens. So 10, uh, 100,000 to the x power is 10 to the 5th power to the x. Shortcut, how many zeros were there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ooh, look at that. It's your exponent value. So if you have a base of 10, your exponent is just letting, is determined by how many zeros you have. And I have 10 to the 5th to the x power. Whenever I have an exponent on an exponent, 
I'm multiplying those two values together. So 5 times x gives me 10 to the 5x. Now based on this shortcut, I'm just going to use that over here. I have a base of 10, and how many zeros do I have? I have 4. So these two now have equivalent fractions, or equivalent bases of 10, so that means their exponents, 5x, is supposed to equal 4. To get the x by itself, we just divide 5 off of both sides. So the solution to my bases is x equals 4 fifths. And that sounds right because we knew it had to be less than one whole in order for a larger number to shrink down to a smaller number. You might look at this fraction and think, how am I going to make a fraction equal to a whole number? It has to do with the negative sign on the exponent. So when we need to flip a fraction to be able to work with a whole number, we just tack on a negative sign to the exponent. So 5 to the negative 1 to the negative n, those two get multiplied, and I have 5 to the negative n. So I now have a base of 5 here. I need 625 to have a base of 5, so I need to start dividing 5 out of it. So 5 and 125 make 620, uh, 625. When I divide 5 out of that, I get 25. When I divide 5 out of that and 5 out of that, I now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5s. So 5 to the negative n equals 5 to the 4th. Well, bases are equal, so exponents are equal. But if I have a negative on my variable, that's a no-no. We have to fix it. We can have a negative on the number, but not on the variable. So to flip the sign on everything, I multiply the equation by a negative sign, and that lets me find the inverses. The opposite of a negative is a positive. The opposite of a positive is a negative. And that seems to fit here, because if I have 1 fifth to the negative 4th, in order to get that negative 4 off of the exponent, I would have to flip the 5, or the 1 fifth, and turn it into a whole number of 5. And so 5 to the 4th is 625. This exponential function has my initial value, my growth factor, my variable, and my answer. So I have to work this backwards. I need to have a base and an exponent. What's in the way of my base being by itself? The 7. So that means I have to divide a 7 off of both sides to be able to have one base. And then I can break the 10,000 down into its like base. And I know it's going to be a base of 10. And as we did earlier, 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros means I have an exponent of 4. 10n equals 10 to the 4th. So n equals 4. Now my exponential function is sharing a side with a constant. We just do our normal process of uh, SADMEP. So we add or subtract before we worry about multiplying or dividing. So I need to take 28 off of both sides to leave me with 5 times 3 to the x power, and that's going to equal 1,215. I need to get the base by itself. The 5 is in the way of that. So I divide 5 off of both sides. That leaves me with 3x equals, oh, 6. Uh, 